Welcome to HTML Tutorials. This is lesson number 28. And in this lesson, I'm going to show you guys how to create an HTML entity. So let's go ahead and get started. The first thing that you want to do is make sure that you have the previous document open from the previous tutorial. And we're going to look for the closing ordered list tag. And once you find that, we're going to click right after that. And we're going to create the opening and closing markup tag for a paragraph. So once you create the opening and closing uh, markup tags for the paragraph, we're going to go in between that and we're going to create our first HTML entity. And the HTML entity is made up of three parts. The first part is the ampersand sign, so we're going to write that. And then the entity name, in this case we're going to write a less than sign, so we'll write LT, and that's the entity name. And then lastly we're going to write semicolon, and those are the three parts to creating the HTML entity. So let's go ahead and hit Control S to save that and see if we see the less than sign when we preview it in our web browser. And as you can see, we have a less than sign here, and that's how you create an HTML entity to show the less than sign. Now you might be thinking, why would I use an HTML entity? Couldn't I just write the less than sign? Well, let's go ahead and go back to our HTML document. You'll notice that we've always used the less than and greater than sign for our markup tags. In this case, even for the paragraph tag, it has the less than and greater than sign surrounding the paragraph tag. In other, in other words, the letter P. So in order to prevent the web browser from confusing the less than and greater than sign with the markup tag, we have to use an HTML entity. So hopefully that makes sense. And I'll actually write it on screen. If we had a less than sign like this in our, our web document, we would probably get it confused even when we're writing coding. We might confuse the less than sign with the markup tag. So it's important that you use an HTML entity so that we can separate the two things. So I'm going to go ahead and delete that. Another way you can write a HTML entity is by starting with the ampersand sign and then writing the pound symbol and then writing a number. So in this case, I'm going to write the number 60 and then semicolon. So in this case, the HTML entity is written as the ampersand sign, then the pound symbol, and then a number, and then semicolon. Now for the numbers, the benefit of that is that most web browsers are going to be guaranteed to interpret that correctly. In this case, I'm writing the less than sign, but I'm using a number and the pound symbol instead of the entity name and then semicolon. So in the case of the one with the entity name, it's easier to remember, but the one with the number, it's almost guaranteed that every web browser is going to interpret that correctly. So those are the two differences between those HTML entities. So let's go ahead and hit Control S and preview this in our web browser and you'll see that we have the less than sign written twice on our HTML document. But again, the main difference is that with one it's easier to remember because we're using an entity name. The other is better because, well, it's more guaranteed that each web browser is going to interpret it correctly. But in my opinion, in most cases you should be safe with the entity name. And if for some reason it doesn't display correctly in a web browser, then just search for the entity number in order to display it that way. So that's my recommendation for that. So let's go back to our HTML document and I'm going to hit the spacebar key and this time I'm going to write another uh, HTML entity that we might not be able to show using our keyboard. So let's go ahead and try that. Write the ampersand sign and then we're going to write the word REG which stands for the registration mark and that's our entity name and then we're going to write semicolon. Okay and let's go ahead and hit control S and then preview this in our web browser. And as you can see, we have the registration symbol written in our HTML web page. So that's something that you might not be able to display using your keyboard. But if you use the HTML entity, you'll be able to display that information. So let's go ahead and go back to our HTML document. We're going to write another HTML entity. So we're going to write ampersand, and then we're going to write copy. And this is for the copyright symbol, and then semicolon, and then hit Control S and then we're going to preview this in our web browser. So as you can see we now have the registration mark and the copyright symbol using HTML entities. So I hope that this video was helpful in showing you how to use HTML entities and if it was don't forget to embed, comment, share, and subscribe and stay tuned for future videos. 